and welcome to Professor Sky's Sweaty Record Review, the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after leaving the gym. Yes, I've changed the name of the channel to Professor Sky's Sweaty Record Review because I, re I realized that maybe the fact that, that, you know, I'm like a fancy academic guy makes me more interesting on the internet than the fact that I'm sweaty. Although one of my favorite YouTubers, Thought Slime, is also very sweaty and he, and he has a lot of success, so I, I don't know. Anyway, today I'm gonna to be reviewing, uh, oh, let me know. Do you like the name change? Do you hate it? Have I sold out? How much have I sold out? On a scale of one to PewDiePie, how much have I sold out? Anyways, I'm gonna be reviewing the album uh, What Would the Odd Do? by Gorilla Toss, and that's spelled like gorilla, like gorillas in the jungle. Wait, <laughs> gorillas are always in the jungle. Like, uh, I was gonna say like gorillas in the mist, but that's, that's about Diane Fossey who studied like gorillas. So not the animal gorillas, but the underground fighter gorilla. <laughs> a minute in, and I, I've almost got the name of the artist set and the name of this channel set. Um, I'm pretty excited to review this. I, I had sort of a, a crisis this morning. I was like, there's like three or four albums I sort of wanted to review, including this one. There was like this Canadian like techno thing that was kind of rough. And there's this interesting kind of like Brooklyn instrumental rock thing. There was a cool like British jazz album. Like I was really struggling. And I, I started writing my notes about several different records until I landed on this one. Um, I didn't really want to review this one because I just didn't like the cover. It has this sort of like psychedelic southwestern looking cover which didn't seem that interesting apparently they're from boston yeah, which is cool i guess i am too um but anyway uh, i ended up sort of like really giving the first song a shot and what i discovered is they're great uh, it's a really interesting hard to classify it's an ep it's only 20 minutes long um definitely listen to the first four songs the fifth track is good not as strong as the rest but I had this sort of sense of like discovery, which is one of the best feelings you can have when doing a show like this, you know, where you're just listening to hundreds of new, hundreds of new bands every month to find one where you feel like, I'm gonna keep an eye on them, I'm gonna listen to everything they do, because they're really excellent, you know, they, they have like this kind of weird sound, you know, like they're, they're, but they're not trying to be weird, you know, like, like their lyrics are like, See, this is the thing, like I have sort of like a psychedelic rock fatigue because there's so much psychedelic rock coming out here. So this looked and sounded initially like that's all this was going to be, but it's actually much more. Um, they do lots of great stuff with like, they change keys and they, they do interesting time signatures, but it never becomes like prog. The lyrics are weird, but it's never forced. Basically, this is as weird as music can get while still being danceable, enjoyable, and not forced. Like it feels weird out of creativity, like out of like these people, whoever they are, just making this music and, and, and just that's how it comes out. Um, the, the singer, the female singer, sorry, you can hear my dogs in the background. Uh, the female singer, uh, her voice is almost more like an instrument. Um, her lyrics are vaguely psychedelic, but there's something about them that's kind of catchy. Uh, the, the right amount of repetition that makes you sort of get these things stuck in your head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start off with the title track. Uh, what would the odd do? I don't, I don't know if that's like what would Jesus do or what does the fox say? Um, I, I don't know. Odd is an interesting word. Odd is an odd word. Um, but what I like is, you know, it starts off and it has these nice kind of like droning strings. Reminded me a little bit of like I don't know, raincoats or something. But there's also like a recorder being played and all throughout this whole record, everything is really layered. But again, it's not really drawn attention to. Like you'll just kind of randomly listen and you'll sort of hear like a cowbell. <laughs> like, was that a cowbell for like one measure, you know? And, and like, it brings this level of interest where the whole thing has a, a woven, textured feel to it. But again, somehow it's not drawing that much attention to itself. So let's listen to a little bit of this. Uh, pretty exemplary lyrics. Uh, is there a tiger in the choir? Does the thickness take you higher? Just very lush and odd. So let's listen to a little bit of this song. Uh, what would the odd do by Gorilla Toss? And that's gorilla as in South American rebel groups. Not as in, are there like animal gorillas in South America? Where do gorillas live? Africa? Okay, 
Let's get back to Gorilla Toss. What would the odd do? So, I mean, you know, you hear the drums, you hear the, the there's like a bass, there's like a guitar, and they're kind of like droning singing. And the whole album is not like this in terms of it doesn't all sound like this, but it's all that level of production. Excellent, lush, odd production. The next track, Plants, it's kind of like a, it's like a nice driving song. It's kind of like a drum machine. This is basically a disco track, like you sort of dance to it. Um, but mixed in with the sort of four on the floor uh, measure, there's also a great weird time signature change towards the end. Very catchy and very weird. Then the track Future Doesn't Know. I don't know if this is a reference to Tomorrow Never Knows. I don't know, that's stupid. You think that's stupid? I have a point coming up about the song that's even stupider. Um, but this is cool because it's almost like a rock anthem. Like it starts off with this like, like blaring guitars. It actually reminds me a little bit of the Cars, but maybe I'm just thinking of the Cars because they're, they're from Boston and Rick Ocasek died last week. Um, but there's like this booming guitars and then this like kind of fussy, keyboard and vocal part comes in, where the, the vocals are being matched by the keyboard. And as you may or may not know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Star Wars fan, and f for whatever reason, I don't know if this is good, this might be bad music journalism, but fortunately, I'm not a music journalist. This song, like the guitars, and it starts off like, like, like Chewbacca, just like rocking and just like super powerful. And then the keyboards and vocals come in, and it made me feel like C-3PO was talking over it. So to me, that's a really good endorsement of this song. Like a, like a Chewbacca guitar with C-3PO keyboards. But whatever, you know, just, if you think that's stupid, that's fine. But if you listen to that, you know, I'm gonna play it, screw it. They're, they might copyright strike me. Nobody copyright strikes me like indie artists that desperately need more exposure because they're great and they don't get enough attention. I don't know what it is. I, I promise whatever label you're on, NNA Tapes, I'm not making any money off of this. Um, but let's play a little bit of Future Never Knows, Doesn't Know, so you get that sense of what I'm talking about with this kind of cool layering. Here we go. By Gorilla Toss. And then the bass. Well, not yet. Right? Get this kind of like Awesome rocking thing, there's keyboards in, like I say, this album is so layered everywhere. Interesting time signature. Now here comes the C3PO. Right, so and then her singing is gonna be like that. So anyway, great track, really nice track. Um, and then another excellent, the next song is called Moth Like Me. And I really like this because it's, I couldn't tell if she was saying I like the life in front of me or I like the light in front of me. But either way, it was sort of this kind of hopeful track. At least that's how I felt. It kind of reminded me at times sort of like uh, Man and the Echo, one of my favorite albums of this year. Um, really strong drum machines, I think mixed in with actual drums, but just a beautiful melody uh, in the chorus and just kind of a nice crazy wah bass. And now because I'm getting ex increasingly extravagant with my channel, I I'm actually going to tell you another thing that I thought of, beyond the Chewbacca thing. Um, there's a joke about moths, and it's sort of the opposite of this song, because this is like a happy song about being a moth, but this is the Norm MacDonald moth joke. And, and if you don't like it, if you don't want to hear it, just skip ahead like a minute. But in my opinion, this is one of the greatest jokes ever told. Um, and, and I'm just going to tell it. I'm just going to tell it. You should look for it and find it. If you've never seen Norm Macdonald tell the joke, he tells it on, uh, Conan O'Brien. Look up Norm Macdonald moth joke. But it's a new thing on my channel, now that I'm Professor Sky. I'm just going to throw in more stuff. Because, screw it. So a moth goes into a podiatrist office. And the podiatrist office says, What seems to be the problem, moth? The moth says, What's the problem? Where do I begin, man? I go to work for Gregory Ilinovich. All day long I work. Honestly, Doc, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I don't even know if Gregory, Il Gregory Ilinovich knows. He only knows he has power over me, and that seems to bring him happiness.
But I don't know, I wake up in a malaise. I walk here and there at night. Sometimes I wake up with the same old lady in my bed that's on my arm, a lady that I once loved, Doc. I don't even know where to turn to. My youngest, Alexandria, she fell in love and in the cold last year, the cold took her down, as it did many of us. And my other boy, and this is the hardest pill to swallow, Doc, my other boy, Gregoro uh, Ivan Latinovich, I no longer love him. As much as it pains me to say, when I look into his eyes, all I see is the same cowardice that I, that I catch when I glimpse of my own face in the mirror. If I wasn't such a coward, then perhaps, perhaps I could bring myself to reach over to that cocked and loaded gun that lays beside me and end this hellish facade once and for all. Doc, sometimes I feel like a spider. And even though I'm a moth, I'm barely hanging on to my web with the everlasting fire underneath me. I'm not feeling good. So the doctor says, Moth, man, you're troubled, but you should be seeing a psychiatrist. Why on earth did you come here? And the moth says, because the light was on. Okay, it's a great joke. In my opinion, if you listen, if you watch the original of that, of that, this is my homework, the professor's homework, listen to the original moth joke, told by Norm MacDonald, much better than I just did, and then listen to Moth Like Me by, uh, by Gorilla Toss. And you'll have kind of like a nice, uh, I don't know, multi-sensory experience of thinking about being a moth and happiness and sadness and joy and despair. The track ends, the album ends with Land Where Money's Nightmare Lives. A little more sparse, like I said, it's not, it's kind of like another wah bass song. I don't know why they had two wah bass songs in there. She isn't really singing, she's kind of speaking, but there's a nice breakdown there with like interesting percussion instruments. I think a cassava, is that what that's called? Like shika shika, I don't know. Uh, kind of a nice sort of in the, in the background, like um, I can feel it in the air tonight, drums, do 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 do, just for a couple, you know, a couple beats. So there you go. That's, uh, that, that's my review of Gorilla Toss. It's really nice, it's exciting, it's, it's art rock. I mean, it's not, it's not, you know, Velvet Underground or television, but it, it gives me that same kind of feeling of discovery where I'm like, all right, here's this weird band of people pushing at the, pushing at the boundaries, um, but in a way that's highly accessible and it doesn't feel avant-garde, it just feels forward. Okay, so. For me, Professor Sky, which I now call myself, for Chewbacca, C-3PO, um, Gregory Ilinovich, and Norm MacDonald, there is, and Diane Fossey, of course, there's the camera.